you know, Kent, the way you're talking, you know, we had a padded practice and a whole lot has changed. So did we meet guys and, and ladies on or their ladies on too yesterday? Not much has changed. Um, last uh, practice before we really start training camp as I see it, which will be tomorrow. Pretty good shape physically. I uh, don't have a lot of major injuries, but we have some. Um, good spirited practice. We're kind of on our routine now of um, – a.m. practices, so we'll be practicing at eight from 8 a.m. until uh, or 8:30 a.m. until 10:30 a.m. each morning when we practice. Um, so that's about it. I'll take your questions if you have any. Okay, Jeremy Warner, you're up. Joey Wagner, and then Bob following. Hey, Bobby, thanks for doing this. Um, I'm just wondering. It, you know, baseball, you think of up the middle defense. Uh, I don't know if you guys feel the same way about football, but you're replacing a lot of your defensive tackles, your middle linebacker, and one of your safeties, Stanley Green. Um, what's, what's the challenge of that? What's that spine of the defense mean for your scheme, your system? Well, first off, Jeremy, our system is about uh, what we have up the middle. And it's always been like that since the beginning of time. We've always kind of had – starts off with the great players inside. We lost a lot of players that played football, but at the same time, um, uh, Jamal Woods is still here and he's played a lot of football. So he'll be our three techniques starting off. Uh, and Rod Perry, I mean, and, you know, Rod Perry is a, is a, is gonna really play good football for us. So pretty solid there. We did lose Daley Harding, but Jake Hansen is moving in there and Milo Eifer. So you look at Rod, and Jamal, Milo, and Jake, and we did lose Stanley Green, but, you know, Sidney Brown is back. Uh, you know, Tony Adams, uh, uh, Quan Martin, Derek Smith. So we feel like we're pretty strong up the middle this year, too. How do you feel about depth at defensive tackle? What you about what you have there? You know, you're always wanting more guys to be able to play, but um, – you know, we still have a few guys that, you know, have played. You know, Calvin Avery has been around here for a while. Deion Pate. You know, Johnny Newton has, has shown flashes early on. So, um, when I say we, we kind of like what we're going with, I'm, um, I'm talking about the two deep. And we feel pretty good about two deep with all of our positions. Thanks, Bobby. Welcome. Okay, jo Joey Wagner, Bob Osmus, and you're on deck. Hey, Bobby, hope you're doing well. I know yesterday you talked about Nate Hobbs' physical skills, but he talked after you about his preparation and how that's kind of evolved from really that sophomore year to where he's at now and his approach for the game. What have you seen out of him in that respect? Well, I have seen uh, growth and uh, first off the field, but that's, that's normal. You know, you're young when you come here and you eventually get to a point where you say, okay, I mean, this is serious and, I need to act like a pro with everything that I do off the field, my preparation on the field. And eventually, you know, you kind of get what you put into it is what you get out of it. Nate is in that place. And I think after a while, he's played enough football now to see that he can really excel at what he's doing. And it takes, you know, a different guy to play corner. Um, so he loves to compete. And it's one thing to jump, catch the ball, do all that. I love that he loves contact also. So you get to a point where, you know, we expected him to have that year, you know, of statistically, but just consistent play every week. And that's where it, I think we'll see. And then he mentioned that when he was a freshman, he didn't really have that upperclassman voice is kind of where the program was at the time. For him to embrace that role, to be a voice to, to guys like Marquez or Devin, how does that help you guys in just kind of continuing to build that secondary that way? Well, another reason why we're so excited about our team, we haven't had, you know, that uh, at a lot of positions. But but now, you know, those guys have played a lot of football. And, uh, you know, not going back in the past, I just know what we have right now, we have a guy like that at every position for the young players to look up to. This is how it should be done. This is what. You know, I want to be like him someday. And that's definitely the case with Nate. Again, he's doing everything the right way on and off the football field. Thanks, Lovey. Welcome. Okay, Bob, you're up. Scott Ritchie on deck. Coach, I've got a couple. 
Uh, first of all, you talk all the time about your team being a family. You guys do too. As a leader of that family, how does it feel to go through the testing and have to worry about you guys all the time? Is that kind of a strain on you? How do you feel? You know, what's your role there with the with players? Well, Bob, we are a family, and we're all in this together. And um, as far as testing is concerned, yeah, I. You know, I'm like a parent that, uh, you know, you're at home and you wonder what, you know, your, your children are doing. And um, I know that they're, I, I really trust that they're doing the right things. But, you know, as we're talking about, the, you know, this COVID-19, I mean, it, you can be doing everything the right way and things can still pop up. So I'm concerned and we just concentrate on making sure the guys are doing what they're involved, what they're supposed to do, you know from, yeah, washing hands, social distancing, all of that, but uh, the mass, we've been doing this a while. So it's just like football, you start practicing and then you get, you get better at it each day. Our guys kind of know the routine and um, I know we're in a good place right now. We know that that can change quickly, but um, hopefully that won't be the case. My other question is, have you learned a lot about this disease and how much, how much are you talking to the medical people your trainers, your doctors know all that about this. Are you kind of with them a lot or did you kind of let, let them do their job? Well, I definitely let our medical people do their job. And they counsel and uh, coach me up and teach. And I've been taught an awful lot. Keep in mind, Bob, we've been doing this for a while too. I talk about the players. I mean, we've been going through a lot of different stages of learning about the disease, how do you cope with it, uh, best practices. Uh, you know, Jeremy Bush, our athletic trainer, and I kind of joke an awful lot. For a fact, I spend more time with Jeremy than he does at Wyatt, and the same thing with, uh, with me and Mary Ann. And uh, again, I trust his leadership, our players do. We've been at the top of, of uh, uh, you know, breakthroughs as far as what we need, you know, cutting edge with everything that we've done throughout the process. And Jeremy, of course, has led that along with, you know, overall Randy Ballard too. Uh, but I definitely, you know, I let Rod Smith call the offense. I let Bob Ligashevsky uh, call the, you know, the, you know, what we do special team wise. You have to trust the people that are in certain roles and I definitely trust them. Thanks coach. Okay, Scott Ritchie followed by uh, Robert Rosenthal. Oh, yeah, I suppose with Edwin Carter uh, sharing yesterday that he was entering the transfer portal, um, have there been or do you anticipate any more changes to the roster with, uh, I guess as you said, maybe training camp really starting in earnest tomorrow? Oh, you know, these kind of things, you know. You know, for some guys, uh, University of Illinois is not for everyone. And um, that was the case with uh, Edwin. Just kind of wish the guys the best. Uh, sometimes divorces, you've heard me make this statement a lot of times, sometimes divorce is a good thing for both parties. Uh, so, no, I'm not expecting anybody else, but, uh, you know, we have a bunch of guys that love being here and they're going to go to work tomorrow and they're looking forward to that. Don't anticipate anything bad happening. Thank you. Well, okay, Robert, Matt Stevens on deck. So, Coach, last year near the end of the year, you were down to like three or four scholarship receivers with so many injuries and such. Um, you know, right now it looks like you have like 12 or 13 guys at receiver plus walk-ons. How, how do you sort through something like that? You brought in three transfers. They're all eligible. You've got all these guys back from injury. How, how do you take this time to sort from, from maybe 13 down to six or something like that? Well, the process started when we got back on campus. You know, what are you doing off the field? Uh, all season workouts, uh, are you somebody that we can count on? So there's a process that started a long time ago. Now you, and every step along the way, you're evaluating guys, which we've been doing. We've had a lot, as I said, we've had a lot of seven on seven practices. So we've seen, and that's really good for the quarterbacks and receivers and DBs, linebackers. We've seen a lot of those guys you talk, you've talked about with our path. So the process will continue. Now the next phase is to see what guys do in pads. And uh, I've just, I've been doing this a few years now. 
And normally if you continue to let the guys compete, they tell you who should start. They tell you who should play, uh, how the depth chart should play out. Once you let guys play, they tell you. That's what I'm looking forward to tomorrow and the rest of training camp. Thanks. Our numbers are good now, and that's what you would like. You know, you go through a year, a lot of things can happen. Uh, and a time like we're in right now, you know, I've, other teams playing, I've seen a lot of soft tissue injuries and things like that. Receivers are positioned, and normally that kind of affects a little bit more. So the more, the better. Okay, Matt Stevens, Alec, you're on deck. Lovey, what are you seeing with some of these early games and other conferences that are playing? I mean, when you watch these games, what are you trying to kind of get out of, you know, watching these games so you can translate it to what you guys are preparing for when you start on the 23rd and the 24th? Well, Matt, well, one thing, I'm a football fan. So sure. especially, you know, exactly what you're looking for. I'm just enjoying good college football, uh, good NFL football. So, you know, I can do that for a living of just, you know, long after I'm done coaching, I'm going to be a, a football fan. So that's been neat. But the other part of it is it's always about situational football and things that come up. So as I'm watching a game, I am looking at it that way too. You know, how do teams handle end of the half, end of the, end of the game? Uh, when I say situational football, what, I mean, this year, every year it has a different flavor. What's the flavor this year down in the red zone? Uh, situations, hey, why, you know, they went for two points here. Uh, fourth down, they went for it. So all these situations kind of pop up. I'm really looking at it that way too. Are you noticing this narrative that's been out there that because there's been no spring and there's been this truncated fall camp that, you know, play has been a little sloppy and, and maybe tackling has been a little sloppy and, and overall execution has been a little sloppier than you've seen in the past? Uh, I think that's a cop out when you, when people say they slide, sloppy play, tackling is bad. Nobody is scrimmaging doing training camp right now. That's a, that went out a long time ago. So it's still about position. Uh, you think of a heavyweight fighter. They're not just beating each other up. They spar. And when they get to the regular fight, then they fight. So to say I've been in situations where, um, you know, where we haven't had a, a big all season. And in the end, there was still pretty good football. You watch the NBA playoffs right now. They're playing pretty good ball. Baseball playing pretty good. I think the Lightning won last night or so. They're playing pretty good hockey. And for me right now, um, I've seen there's been a winner every game. So somebody's playing pretty good football. So don't buy that. I think we're going to, when the Big Ten start playing football, I think we're going to see a, a good brand of football that's been as good as it's been in the past. Thanks, sir. Hey, Alec, Jim Cotter, and then Paul Banks will be the final question of the day. Hey, Coach, thanks for doing this. I had a question about Derek Smith. I know since he's gotten here some, from Miami, he's kind of bounced around a little bit on the roster between linebacker and safety. Since he got here. Okay, is that me, Kent? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, Alec, you'll have to repeat that. You were breaking up. Okay. Sorry, um, I was just wondering about Derek Smith. Since he got here from Miami, he's kind of bounced around a little bit on the roster between linebacker and safety. Um, I was just kind of curious about his versatility last season and uh, what you've seen from him and how impressive that's been. Yes, well, when you're a new player and uh, on, you know, the prototype at strong safety and linebacker, outside linebacker, it's a similar athlete that we play with. So when you're new coming in, we're going to move you around a little bit and see where the best place uh, for you would be. Uh, that's just kind of standard on what we do. We've had a few guys that have gone through that same process, Delano Warrior, uh, different guys like that. So we did move him around a little bit. But last year he was on the look squad, and uh, we were just looking at his athletic ability. After we had a chance to work with him, we feel pretty good about him being where we have him now, and that's the safety position. And that's where he'll play for us this year. Liked everything about what he's done. You know, he's got good size, good movement. He's a hitter. I assume from what we saw last year, he's a hitter. Can't wait to get on the pads and see where he is now. Thanks, Coach. Okay, Jim Cotter and then Paul Banks. 
Good morning, Lovey. I hope everything's going well. Uh, just had a quick question regarding the uh, new rules and uh, what the uh, red shirt, you know, like last year it was you could play in four games before deciding whether or not you wanted a red shirt. With the reduced number of games this year, has that uh, standard changed a little bit or is it going to be still a third of what the uh, eight or nine games would be for uh, this year? Well, for us, I mean, everybody has a free year. So we're just playing everybody. Don't even have to worry about any of that right now. Um, this is one year where it's just, you know, it's a freebie for everyone. So none of those things really come into play uh, right now. But just like we've done in the past, I mean, if it's somebody we feel like can help us right now, we're going to play them. And uh, once we get to a, you know, a regular standard year, if it's a young player and we can, you know, we'll you we'll, typical year we'll play the four games and you know decide what to do with them from there thanks coach okay paul well, thanks final question for coach and hey, love thanks for doing this uh, my question is kind of general at this point in camp is there kind of a feel of routine and football's football and business as usual or is it just feeling still really strange with the late start and you know like the question before watching other teams play like What's kind of the general mood and sense of that? Well, Paul, for me, it, it really is. It's, you know, we fish, we get in pads tomorrow, and then it will really feel just like any other year to me. Uh, yeah, it's been different watching games, but that's what we've done in the past. Now, uh, you know, we're not watch, we won't be watching a lot of games from other teams now, just us, you know, practicing football. So, it's been pretty standard for me if you really get to it. It seemed like we've been doing it a long period of time. And 2020 is just a different year, but we've embraced it being different. And hopefully it'll help teams like the University of Illinois do something that we haven't done in the past. Cool. Thanks, Lovey. Okay, thank, thank you, Coach. You. Appreciate it. We'll talk tomorrow after the first day with pads. Thank you.